My name is James. I'm the designer and builder of the winging ground effect craft called the Mud Skipper. Due to all the interest I've received, I've decided to make a complete series of walkthrough videos to explain all aspects of this craft and to hopefully inspire others. The series will be split into about seven different videos, each covering important and entertaining aspects of my design, build and test process. In this video, I'll explain a little about myself, what is ground effect, why I chose to build this craft, my design considerations and my design inspirations. If there is enough interest, I'll continue the video series talking about subjects including the design, the actual build, why it's named the Mud Skipper, a complete walkthrough, the testing stage and dealing with authorities and more. So a little about me. In a nutshell, I'm a serial builder, designer, tinkerer and fixer. Since I was young, I've always been in the shed building things. One evening I stumbled across a YouTube video from Universal Hovercraft with their UH18SPW Hover Wing Flying Hovercraft and was immediately hooked. Initially deciding that it was a little too expensive for me, I decided to build their UH10F uh, single seater hovercraft. Well, what a blast that was. The feeling of gliding over the water, not feeling any bumps was absolutely amazing. This took me about three months to build and about $3,000. About a month after finishing that, I bought plans from UH18 SPW and after 11 months of building, I was ready for the first test flight. Here is a video of my first test flight in the UH18 SPW. As I set up the craft down at the beach, I got in and taxied downwind. I turned around and applied full power on both engines. The engine roared to life and it started accelerating down the beach. The speedo was going 10, 20, 40. While I'm starting to think, I hope this works. At about 80 kilometers an hour, I gently pulled back on the elevator and the thing lifted into the air. What an absolute feeling that was. The feeling of being about a meter above the ground flying. This is what got me hooked on winging ground effect craft. I don't actually have any engineer or design qualifications, but my experiences in building and flying model aircraft, being a pilot and just an all-around tinkerer, have allowed me to build a wing and ground effect craft. What is ground effect? When close to the ground, a wing experiences an increase in lift and a decrease in drag due to compressing air between itself and the ground. Effectively, it is now riding on a cushion of air. This can be seen in nature like in this video here, a pelican gliding effortlessly over the surface of the water. The main benefit of ground effect is the increase in efficiency received by the reduction of drag. This allows specific craft to fly at high speeds using a lot less energy than a boat or an aircraft. Ground effect is effective within one wingspan but most effective within half a wingspan. The main negative of ground effect is a close proximity to the ground, so conditions need to be ideal for the craft to operate. So why the Mudskipper? I chose to design and build the Mudskipper for a few reasons. Firstly, I love flying. Being an airline pilot is a great job and career, but you're flying to places where the company wants you to fly, Take who the company wants you to take, fly at times the company tells you to fly, and the flying for very good reason is very scripted and black and white. So I needed another outlet. Owning or hiring an aircraft didn't appeal to me as hiring now these days is very expensive and owning an aircraft just seems like a money pit. The cost of insurance, hangar, landing fees, maintenance and fuel just to name a few. With a ground effect vehicle, I can have the freedom to fly where I please, do my own maintenance, trailer the craft home, and run it on normal car fuel. And for me, flying at two meters above the ground is where it's at. Now let's talk about some of the design 
considerations. So I had the plans for the UH18 SPW and I had built one, but there were issues. The main one was the hovercraft was stored outside for six weeks in the sun as the shelter had collapsed, but I was away from home. This caused a lot of delamination between the plywood and the foam, and to fix that was going to be a whole lot of effort. So I chose to design my own. Anytime something is to be designed, there are many design considerations, and part of the fun is calculating what is really important in the design. This means at times you need to compromise between different elements to achieve the desired result or very close to it. Some of the issues I needed to resolve was, first of all, hovercrafts break all the time. Every hour on the hover wing was about two hours worth of repairs back at home. This was just unacceptable for me, as I absolutely hate repairing things once I've built something. The reason for the breakdown is hovercrafts have a skirt and that can tear and break and also it sprays up water everywhere. If you're operating on salt water, that salt gets everywhere and rusts every part on the hovercraft. Also, hovercrafts have a lot of moving parts which obviously can lead to further issues. So to resolve this, I removed the skirt, went with the hull design and reduced the moving parts to one, just being the propeller. Secondly, the hover wing flew at a high nose attitude, which I didn't like. I reviewed recordings of me flying it and then made calculations to increase the angle of incidence of the wing to allow for a nose attitude of zero degrees during flight. Next was the speed. The hover wing would lift off at 80 km an hour, but I wanted a slower speed of about 60 km an hour. To achieve this, I increased the wing area by increasing the wingspan and increasing the call. Also had to ensure that I built it lighter. The hover wing was also very marginal when I had a passenger on board, so I ended up increasing the horsepower to 120 with a Jabiru 3300A engine, which replaced a very similar weight to the Subaru EA81. Next, it had to be easily trailable and recoverable if an engine fails. The hover wing was 2.5 metres wide, and when the skirt filled up with water, it weighed about 900 kilos. You would need at least 16 people to remove it from the water onto the trailer. This is another reason for the hull design, and also to build a trailer that fully submerges in the water for recovery. At 2.5 metres wide, it also made it very hard to manoeuvre around the backyard. So I designed it to keep the length and width as short as possible. So I've spoken about some of the negatives and how I resolved them, but what did I like? Two very standout things. Firstly, the material wings. While they're highly inefficient, they're very easy to make, store and set up, which outweighed the negatives of the inefficiencies. Secondly, I really like the rudder only control. The lack of complexity and moving parts by not having ailerons to set up each time is a huge plus. And due to the secondary effect of your role as a chief in the craft. So well so that the rudder is coupled to the same stick as the elevator. So I worked out all my design considerations. Great, but now how do I build it? As I said, I'm not an aeronautical engineer, nor a maritime engineer, so I don't have enough knowledge of aerodynamics or boat building to build something like this without more research and inspiration from other things out there that actual engineers have designed and built and have been successful. My father once told me a saying that has always stuck with me, why reinvent the wheel? With that in mind, I started researching. My inspiration came from two things, the UH18 SPW, and the Volmer VJ22, a 1960s wooden seaplane. So the wing concept of the hover wing was already a proven design, so for many reasons I kept that but made a few changes to suit my needs. Next was the hull shape. The Volmer is a proven and successful seaplane, so I went with a similar shape on the front section of the hull up until the step. Next was material thickness. 
The seaplane needs to be light enough but strong enough to handle forces on the water and in flight. I did not have a clue on what thickness material I could use and that would be both light and strong enough. So I studied the plans and used similar material thicknesses used in the construction of the Bomber EJ-22. Well, I hope you enjoyed video one of the Mud Skipper walkthrough series. In the next video, I'll discuss the CAD design, materials used, the build process including the construction of the propeller, and why I chose to name it the Mud Skipper. Please like and subscribe to help me with motivation to make the next videos, as there is a fair amount of effort in making these types of videos, and they are not my strong point. I prefer to be out flying. Thanks for watching.